effective survival gear online. Hi, I'm W. Dean Shook, and our friends at Buy Emergency Food is so confident that their prices can't be beat. They'll match any competitor's online prices of any product they offer. They've searched far and wide to find the most superior quality products available. Buy Emergency Food is 100% committed to providing these high quality items at the best prices online. Sign up today at WDeanShook.com for their gourmet taste, easy storage, 25 year shelf life, nutritional information, water filtration, and a portable solar power. Come see why Buy Emergency Food is simply the best brands for providing the basic needs with disaster strikes. And they have free shipping on every order. Nothing's easier than their free shipping policy. That's right, 100% free shipping. Your emergency food is usually shipped within three business days. It's fast, effective, and free. Does it get any better than that? The food you need when disaster hits. Sign up today at WDeanShook.com. That's WDeanShook.com. Thank you for allowing me that break. I appreciate it so much. And our sponsors are the lifeblood of this program. If you would, please visit our sponsors. You can go to the homepage. That's WDeanShook.com. And you can um, <clears throat> find banners for our sponsors at the bottom of the page. Appreciate it so very much. Give them a visit. Uh, let's see. I think we have, uh, oh, through the end of the day today uh, with LifeLock, you can get a 30-day free trial and up to 15% off of your final purchase. Woohoo! What a deal, but you better hurry, you better get in there today. I appreciate it very much. All right, I want to play uh, a couple more clips here. Just so that we have the good understanding that this is not uh, just me saying these things. If you would please, I want to uh play a clip about these terrorists who are crossing our border. Nearly 9 years after 9/11, the United States is still facing a major terror threat. You may be surprised to learn who agents are catching trying to cross the border from Mexico. We reviewed congressional reports and traveled to the southwest to find a threat that affects us here in metro Atlanta. The Border Patrol uses ATVs and horses to patrol the 2,000-mile southwest border. Most of the illegals are from Mexico or South America, but thousands are classified as OTMs, other than Mexicans, including hundreds from nations that sponsor terror. These are the records we obtained at this federal detention center near Phoenix, Arizona. We found illegals from Afghanistan, Egypt, Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, Sudan, and Yemen in custody. We have left the back door to the United States open. Former Arizona Congressman J.D. Hayworth has seen the intelligence reports. And we have to understand that there are people who definitely mean to do us harm who have crossed that border. This Arizona rancher doesn't want to be identified because he fears the Mexican cartels who smuggle drugs and people near his property. This Muslim prayer rug was found on his ranch. Just one more indicator that there's a whole lot more than just a few poor Mexicans coming into the United States. There's more. This congressional report on border threats confirms members of Hezbollah have crossed the southwest border. It also contains photos of military jackets found on the border. The Arab insignia reads, Martyr, Way to Eternal Life. The other depicts a plane crashing into the Twin Towers. The American public has been kept in the dark about this whole issue. Was a Border Patrol agent for 20 years. He worries about the dangerous people who get through and may be living among us. In my experience, uh, for every one apprehended, there was at least 10 that would escape apprehension. The congressional report also reveals the route Middle Easterners take. They travel from Europe to South America to the tri-border region where they learn to speak Spanish, then travel to Mexico and blend in with other illegals heading to this country. One of the world's most wanted terrorists was actually spotted in Atlanta, and speculation is that he came up through the mountains into this country through the Mexican border. Adnan Shurkajuma is a Saudi Arabian pilot and bomb expert with a $5 million bounty on his head. He spent time in Atlanta just prior to 9-11 and left on a bus. In 2004, Shirka Juma was one of seven al-Qaeda members the feds were looking for after they were spotted in Central America and believed to be heading for the U.S. 
the most grave concern from the congressional report, that Mexican drug cartels will help terrorists smuggle weapons across remote border crossings. Because if we learn nothing from 9-11, certainly we should have learned that borders are important. And former Arizona Governor Janet Napolitano is now Secretary of Homeland Security. We wanted to ask her about the border threat, but our request for an interview was never answered. A lot of eyes are on Arizona right now because of the controversial immigration law. But there is another concern there many people know very little about. People from terrorist nations are among the hundreds of thousands of people caught each year crossing the Mexico-U.S. border. Channel 2's Justin Farmer recently traveled there and shared what he learned with a Georgia congressman, Justin. Well, Monica, we have documents showing people from Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, all in custody for trying to sneak into the U.S. from Mexico. We rode along with Border Patrol agents to get a sense of what it takes to get here. And we surprised Congressman Paul Brown with what we learned. In the Arizona border town of Douglas. And they've apprehended them just now, so we're going to try and catch up with them. It's a 24 7 game. We've got more people jumping. Of cat and mouse. 10 in the area. Border agents use cameras, night vision, and underground sensors <laughs> to track and catch illegals who jump the fence between Mexico and the U.S. They walked around in a circle. We were with border agents as they caught these two men. I caught this guy uh, less than a week ago. We catch the guys, they release them, and a couple of days later, they're back again. That doesn't solve any problem. It just keeps the back door to the United States, for all intents and purposes, wide open. The Douglas border fence is easy to jump. It's relatively short. There's no razor wire. And just a couple miles outside of town, you can walk right into the United States. This fence is only meant to keep drug smugglers from driving their vehicles across. Agents have 2,000 miles of southern border to patrol and protect. Some cases, you, you can still find the barbed wire fence. This is the busiest spot in the nation for Border Patrol. Last year, they apprehended a quarter million people trying to enter the U.S. in the Tucson sector alone. Most are from Mexico or South America. Almost 20% have criminal records. And every year, hundreds of people caught crossing are found to be from terrorist nations. Since January, Border Patrol agents have been on the lookout for 23 Somalis with ties to Al-Qaeda. The Somali terrorists were released from a Mexican prison and believed headed for the U.S. border. But hundreds of people from more than a dozen nations that sponsor terror are being captured every year sneaking into the country. The government no longer releases this list of what they called captured OTMs other than Mexicans, but we obtained the list from a congressional staffer. It reveals that nine years after 9-11, our open borders remain a major threat. Iran 42, Iraq 42. Georgia Congressman Paul Brown is on the Homeland Security Committee, yet he had never seen this list until we showed it to him. It is shocking to see the amount of people from Middle Eastern countries coming in on that report. I tell you, this is something that our committee members really need to see. So I'd like to have a copy of that list to take with me back to Washington so that I can share it. Congressional reports show that Mexican drug cartels tightly control the smuggling of people and drugs. It's feared they're also helping smuggle terrorists and weapons into the U.S. The Arizona border may be 1,500 miles from Atlanta, but what's happening here impacts everyone in America. We have hundreds and hundreds of folks coming from Middle Eastern countries. And frankly, I don't think most of these people are coming here to cut our grass. We must secure the border. Well, go to the Two Investigates page at WSBTV.com to see our complete list of people detained from nations that sponsor terror. And next Monday, we will have much more on the border threat, including the Mexican drug cartels and the route drugs well, take from the border well, right here to Mexico. Coming straight from the horse's mouth or the horses patoot, whichever way you want to look at it. Fact is that when they lie to us about these things, on a regular basis, they lie and lie and lie. How are we supposed to know what to believe? When we have a terrorist attack like we had at Boston, how uh, did you notice that? I don't know if you noticed or not. I noticed that the within a half hour of the attack, it was all over the place. These must be right-wing extremists. These are right-wing extremists. And the hypocrisy about this is 
just incredible to me. Do you remember when Bush was in office? The progressives and the Democrats were protesting in the street. They were chanting for um, – I mean you heard people calling for impeachment and he should uh, – Bush should, and Cheney should go to jail and um, they were um, burning effigies and um, it was – it was incredible. And, and when the rest of America said, you know, this is your president you're talking about. Oh, they just even got madder. They protested more. I mean, <laughs> they were so up in arms saying that this government was corrupt and blah, 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 blah. It just went on and on and on through his whole term. It went on. And they and they criticized anybody that said anything about him. Well, now the tables have turned. And this is this is where the hypocrisy comes in. Now the tables have turned. And now there's a Democrat in office and a very progressive liberal Democrat who wants to make drastic, drastic changes. And when the conservatives or the libertarians come out and say something against them, then all of a the sudden they're domestic terrorists. And that everything is a right-wing conspiracy, and they're doing the same thing. It's just the opposite now. Why was it okay for them to do it when Bush was in office, but it's not okay for somebody else to do it when their person is in office? So the hypocrisy here is just incredible, and it just it, – it creates more of a divide every time we engage in these things. People don't realize how divided all of these things really are. Divide, you know, it's divide just, and conquer is the model. Right, divide and conquer. You know, President Obama wants to make sure that there's change. If he's actually going by the rules for radicals that I went through on the Understanding Obama program, if you haven't heard that, <coughs> excuse me, go back in the archives and listen to Understanding Obama where I explained very clearly – the direct passages out of Saul Alinsky's book, Rule for Radicals, How to Make Change Through Disaster, basically. And it's a perfect fit for what the current administration is doing. And you will see how important it is for everybody to be divided. Now, this is really important. It's important because unity is the last thing that the people that want to make change want. They believe that the only way that we're going to have a meaningful change in this country is through um, through a massive uh, division that everybody has to be divided to the point where uh, someone has to come in as the savior with the grand solution. So basically what's happening here is we have a group of people who are creating the divides. They're creating the divides on all kinds of levels, uh, a class divide with the rich and the poor, Political divide, conservatives, libertarians, a, a religious divide between Islam, Christianity, um, Judaism, and secularism. Um, there's, there's just a wedge being driven, uh, homosexual marriage. Uh, uh, all of these things are just wedges being driven in to, to continually divide and divide again and divide again and divide again and divide again. And, divide again. and it, through this division – is the grand plan to bring about the change that the powers that be, whoever these are, whether it's Obama, the people that are controlling Obama, um, people that are controlling the administration, um, whoever this is, is only going to get this through these massive divisions, and they're being very successful. <laughs> so all of you progressives who are listening, all of you Democrats that are listening, all you conservatives, libertarians, everyone that's listening – Listen to what I'm going to say here. The only way anybody is going to have any meaningful change is going to be is if we put aside these little petty divisions and find the things that we can unite on. Once we become united and we're able to set these other little petty divisions aside, that's when the people are going to be back in control. Until then, we're going to be controlled, not have control. So if you're tired of being controlled, then set these little issues aside. Now, President Obama has been very effective in creating these divides recently, especially with the uh, gun control um, and with the uh, homosexual marriage. He's been, he's been flying around to all of the states 
where he has a lot of support, and he's been firing these people up. He's been saying, do what's right. 